Hello everybody, this is T. Harriman. Again, I hope you're having an amazing day. And if you're not, I am sending you my warmest wishes so that you will have an amazing day. Um, but before we go on, uh, let me get your opinion. What do you think of my new ad campaign? I I've thought of T. Harriman, not Illuminati, or T. Harriman, not a reptile overlord. Uh, there's also T. Harriman, not a projection of the Matrix. I'm here in my bedroom today because my son Jacob is studying Arabic for summer school right now. And so um, I am in here so that I don't disturb him. And my mission today is to discuss generational missions. This means a lot to me because I was born in a year of great turmoil with Martin Luther Jr. I'm sorry, my apologies, Martin Luther King Jr.'s assassination and worldwide protests. And now as I sit, hit my half century mark, again, I witness great protests. Nonetheless, I, I just don't feel a half century old. Time to me is a sort of half lit blur in which some days I feel 200 and other days I feel 20. Now there are for a few reasons for this. First, because of my bipolar disorder and depression, uh, I've been on extremely high powered medications that have wiped entire years off of my memory. In years like this, you know, I remember my kids being born and that is all. That set, I believe, my psychological age back decades. Second, um, I was an older mom. So, uh, as you know, I'm a single mom of four. And my kids are teenagers now, which makes me feel, which makes me feel young. I like to tell my son, Jacob, that my generation was named after a punk band, Generation X, because, you know, to me, that sounds very cool. At this juncture, he'll say, oh, that's okay. You and your generation enjoy being named after a punk band. I'll just go back to worrying about school shootings, police virus, uh, uh, police violence, and coronavirus. And I laugh at his joking attempt to make me feel guilty, but he has a point, which is that every generation, whether they realize it or not, has a mission to fulfill. The greatest generation and the silent generation kept evil from taking over the world. The boomers did introduce and maintain the great American tradition of dissent, but largely lured by the spoils of capitalism, they failed at their mission to cure the environment and maintain their ideals. Uh, as, a men, as a member of Generation X, honestly, I don't know what our mission is except to complain about the amount of milk in our lattes. But I have the greatest admiration for millennials and Generation Z because you've already faced up to history's challenges and worked on saving the world. Other generations, I truly believe, really, really need to take you seriously and give you credit instead of complaining about you. Uh, from drinking water instead of pop to peacefully protesting, even if you never accomplish anything else, you will have a story about your generation's finest hour. But of course, thanks to, admittedly, previous generations, you don't have the luxury of putting up your feet and resting. I was thrilled. I could not get enough of K-pop stands reducing the crowd in Donald Trump's June 2020 Tulsa rally from 1 million expected to about 6,000. Uh, of course, who doesn't love, and I find irresistible, stories of an underdog. And I think it's, it, it, certainly there's personal reasons in that too. I very much as a single mother, um, as someone who has had to go uh, to food banks uh, to feed my children back in the day, um, 
you know, I definitely understand what it is to be an underdog. So I adore, I love underdog stories. And, um, and so that story was just the best story. And uh, what really made it so fabulous is that in banding together and using technology as a way other generations wouldn't, you, gen you millennials, you uh, Generation Z, you changed a wor the world in a way that mere voting couldn't. After all, when folks vote, they get one vote for a preset length of time. And don't get me wrong, this vote is super, super, super important. It empowers public officials and it empowers you. Uh, people who say their vote doesn't count, um, or if you feel your vote doesn't count, that's when, that's especially when you need to get out and vote. You need to get out and vote. And yes, I mean, we have endless evidence of stories in which, yeah, one vote did make a difference in a race. But also, um, voting, we know that voting tends to empower you. It tends to make you feel more empowered, which leads to better, um, you know, a better financial outlook for your life, better education, better health all these things. So do yourself a favor and make yourself part of that voting class. There's lots of different ways to vote. Uh, it's important to vote with our dollars, uh, especially in a capitalistic society, so that we know what values we're perpetuating. Um, things like that. It's important to vote with your time, with your volunteerism. Uh, but what the K-pop fans in the Tulsa political rally did was something that realistically any other generation couldn't. Maybe you young people cannot vote or donate a million dollars to campaign to a campaign, but you wield a different kind of power, the power to influence and frankly humiliate, shaping the course of an election and history. So you all, you millennials, you Generation Z, you have a different kind of power that no previous generation has had. Now, it's probably a situational which kind of power that I mentioned, voting with your time, money, um, which, which is most important. But what K-pop fans did was important for us to keeping our First Amendment rights. America has lots of reasons granted for other countries to hate us. But the K-pop stands humiliation of a leader who hobnobs with dictators proves we've still got it. Now, activism isn't just something that other people over there do. You are an activist, whether you want to be or not, whether you realize it or not, by the way you vote, by the way you spend, by the way you eat, the messages you send, and so on. Every generation has to save the world and I'm saying every generation right now, you ha we all have to work together to save the world by people doing whatever they can, pull together with other people and double points if you find common ground with people who aren't like you. This is why, uh, one of the reasons why I write, because I want for, and, and especially with my birth, Burke, <laughs> especially with my book, The 10,000 Year Plan. Burn this book, The 10,000 Year Plan. I wrote that because I want for every single person in the world to identify what they can do. I want you to identify what you can do to make this world a better place before you pass. In this sense, everyone can be a superhero. So let me ask you, what are you doing today to save the world? There's so much we can do. If you don't believe in um, climate change, that's fine. Because I think you can agree that there's something else that 
you know, th I think we can all agree this is not a perfect place. And there's room to make the world better for ourselves, for someone else, for our children. Aha. And now you see why I didn't make the bed. Because there's my main coon, Peaky. <sighs> Just being adorable. Just a cute boy. Save the world for cute cats like Peaky. Isn't he adorable? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, in this sense, everyone can be a superhero. Teachers, it would be cool if you could comment below about, say, a community service project your class is doing to save the world. Kids, maybe you can comment below with a cool idea for volunteerism you heard. Please also remember to like, subscribe. Yes, <clears throat> smash those like and subscribe buttons.